Welcome back. All right, so we're going to recap a couple of games. We've got one more game coming tonight. That's the Oilers and the Ducks. I'm sure uh, that'll that'll be one that people are just waiting on the edge of their seat to see what happens. And yet there are Oilers fans that are very excited to see what happens and Duck fans that probably would like to see a regulation loss because right now they sit 32nd in the league. But we're going to start off talking about Calgary and Winnipeg. Uh, the Flames had to bounce back from that game last night. That game last night was a complete embarrassment against Chicago, and they do. Now, Winnipeg still has a game in hand, and they still have the tiebreaker on the Flames, but the Flames get done what they had to get done tonight. Markstrom versus Hellebuck in this one. Good early, good early flow to the game. Uh, Anderson gets hurt along the boards. The Flames come out of it with a power play. Now, because Anderson wasn't that badly hurt and comes back onto the power play, um, the booing happens every time he touches the puck from then on. Uh, so Dubois is in the box on that play. Flames can't set up. Again, there's boos whenever Anderson touches it. Richie has a shot that's held. That's killed off. Flames go back to the power play. That lasts for a minute and 55 seconds. It then becomes a four-on-four, -four, and then it's a Jets power play. Lots of power plays in this game. Just heads up. Uh, it's all killed off, and then Morrissey has a blast that's held. Uh, Jets go back to the power play, which honestly is just killing the flow to this game. Uh, it's a four-minute power play. Flames prevent an early setup. They clear again. There's a shorthanded Lewis rush that kills some time. Uh, they cycled as the first two minutes came to an end, and then in the second two minutes of that power play, they score. At 11.43, it's Connor from Ehlers and Dubois. Good zone entry, great pass, and buried in the back of the net. Flames get zone time. They can't get to the net. Uh, Pionk has a shot that's blocked aside. Nemestikov with a shot that's caught and held. Lucic tips one wide on a rush. The Jets clear, but after one period, they're up one nothing, and it looked like they they may very well, you know, get that distance between themselves and the Flames. Second period, the Flames start with a full power play. Manjapani has a shot that deflects wide. There's a shorthanded Lowry chance that saved. And then there's a shorthanded Schmidt rush chance that's defended, uh, and then he couldn't bury on a break after that. Still shorthanded, so that's killed off. But the Jets had the best chances. So again, the Jets with some momentum here, right? Now, Zadorov scores on a rush, but it's a goalie interference challenge, and, yep, doesn't count. But the Jets press at five minutes, looking to get a second goal, and then it's Mangiapane scoring on a rush from Backlund at 6.06. We celebrate with punching, because that's what we do in the NHL now. Uh, Jets come out of that with a power play. Flames, though, with a pretty aggressive penalty kill. They kill that off. Then we get a power play for Calgary. It's the fourth already. We're not even to the halfway mark of the game yet. Uh, Richie has a net drive that draws a crowd. Lindholm's denied. It's cleared out. Kadri has a shot that's held as it ends. The Jets get their fifth power play of the game. 8.48 left in the game. That is killed, or in the period, I should say. That's killed off uh, by the Flames. Or by, the, yeah, by the Flames. Uh, Shifley then has a blast that saved. The rebound's held. The shots and play are staying pretty even in this game. It's 1-1 one, one after 1, so the score's even as well. Third period. Wheeler has a shot that's blocked. The Flames draw a power play. Uh, still, every time Anderson touches the puck, he gets booed. The power play is killed off. It manages two shots. And then Dewar. Uh, it's a wraparound that deflects in off Schmidt's stick. Uh, Lewis and Zadorov with the assist of 408. So, uh, yeah, pretty pretty impressive right there that the Flames get the lead. Uh, Jets press for response, but the shots on net are 7-3. to three, Calgary in six and a half minutes. Power play then for the Flames. They cycle. The Jets cleared out. That's killed off. There's a net feed to Lindholm. Uh, that was picked off. And then Zadorov makes it 3-1 to one after all. He gets that goal back. Uh, Huberto and Mangiapane with the assists at 10-40. Wires that one top corner. Lowry's denied. Markstrom holds on that play. Ehlers has a chance to save the Flames clear. Morrissey's denied. And then we get some pushing. Uh, Jets press with four and a half minutes left. Uh, they're kept to the outside. Lowry's denied. And then we get more pushing. Uh, the goalie pull happens with 1-10 left. But yeah, the Flames don't allow much. Your final score is 3 to 1. Calgary wins. They go to 37, 27 and 15. They tie the Jets who are 43, 32 and 3 on the season. Shots on net are 9-7 Winnipeg in the first, 13 to 12 Calgary in the second, 15 to 14 Calgary in the third. Final shots are 35 to 35. Power plays Calgary 0 for 6, Winnipeg 1 for 5. Hits 33 to 25 in favor of Calgary. Markstrom saves 34 out of 35. Hellebuck saves 32 out of 35. And so there you go. The Jets had the opportunity could not make that happen tonight. All right, and the other game, Tampa Bay and the Rangers. Hey, I said Tampa Bay doesn't play that well on the road. I know I wore them for the preview, but it's an excuse to wear the Storm jersey too, right? So anyways, it's Vasilevsky versus Shesterkin in this one. Early jump for the Rangers. Perry has a rush chance that's saved. Shots are 2 to nothing for Tampa Bay at 3.5 minutes, so pretty strong start there. 
Hagel has a net drive that's held, and then we get some pushing. The Rangers end up getting themselves a power play, and they score on it. It is Kreider from Tarasenko and Zibanejad at 6-13. He tips that one in. That's the second shot of the game for the Rangers. And then on their third shot at 7:41, Kako wires one far corner on a 3-on-2. Maybe Vasilevsky would want to have another chance at that one. Uh, Truba exited hurt at around this point, too. He would not return to the game. Uh, Bolts press are kept to the outside. And then at 10:21, Mott scores one short side. I thought that one was iffy as well. That's only the sixth shot of the game. Goudreau and Schneider with the assists. It's 3-0 Rangers. But then we get a power play for Tampa, and they score on it. 19 seconds after it became 3-0, it becomes 3-1. It's Kalorn on the power play from Kucherov and Sergachev. Uh, he tips that one in. That was only the fourth shot for Tampa, so it looked like we might get a really high score in this one. Uh, Rangers press to respond. There's a point to Stamkos pass that's broken up. Uh, Bolts press with three and a half minutes left. We then had a fight between Maroon and Harper. Uh, Rangers come out of that one with a power play as a result because it's Pat Maroon. Uh, that's killed off. No shots on net, so no harm, no foul there. Uh, Bolts, I guess there was a foul and then there was no harm as a result. Uh, Bolts press in the final minute with six seconds left. Tampa Bay draws themselves a power play. So that rolls over into the second period. This is where they announced Trubo wouldn't return with an upper body injury. There's a shorthanded rush chance for Kreider. That saved. Mikola clears on the next entry. They kill that off. No shots for Tampa Bay there. Hagel then has a shot that's held, and there's some more pushing. Uh, and, and on the next hold, there was pushing as well. These teams not liking each other very much. Kalorn has a shot that saved as Tampa Bay presses. There's more pressure by them at five minutes. Seven minutes in, the shots are five to one in favor of Tampa Bay, and then they would score on their sixth shot. Now, last I looked, it's still listed as Hagel's, but I think it's going to become Radish's. Uh, so not as in radishes as in the, the, the vegetable, but is in radish apostrophe S. Darren Radish. Uh, Kalorn with the assist at 7 minutes and 10 seconds. So last I saw it still says Hagel from Radish and Kalorn. So that one deflects in, but then 15 seconds later on a net drive, Mott buries one. Uh, Goudreau and Lafreniere with the assists. Trocek then fires one high on a turnover. We get a power play for Tampa. Shorthanded rush chance for Schneider. He fires it wide. That's killed off, and then Hagel scores to make it close again. Uh, that actually, uh, does that one, two, yeah, it's four to three at that point. Uh, Hagel from Sorelli and Hedman at 11.34. The Rangers then end up getting themselves a power play. There's a post for Zibanejad. That power play's killed off. Three shots for the Rangers on that. We then had a fight between Perry and Trocek, and there was a lot of fighting because these teams are very, very familiar with each other and very, very much dislike one another. Uh, Bolts press with two minutes left. We then had a fight between Colton and Schneider. Now, uh, it was a clean hit by Schneider, and they gave Colton the the instigator. Thank you. Uh, I, this is what should happen. When somebody throws a clean hit and somebody comes in and, and drops the gloves with them, the guy who comes in and drops the gloves should get the instigator. They have not been calling that generally. It was called here, and I agree. So it's 2, 5, and 10 for the player who initiates, and in this case, it was... Colton, who was the instigator. So uh, it's four to three after two. Third period, 113 left in the Rangers power play. Kreider's denied and close. Tampa Bay does finish the kill. Radish has a shot that's kicked aside. The Rangers leading in shots four to one, four minutes in. Uh, Hagel has a screenshot that saved. Bolts press at eight and a half minutes. Point has a net feed that's picked off. Tampa Bay presses with nine and a half minutes left. And at 1138, Kreider would score from Zibanejad and Fox. So rush chance the other way. Uh, it was post. It was a post for Zibanejad, and then Kreider buries the rebound. Uh, Rangers get a power play. Kucherov uh, ends up breaking the penalty box camera there, so and he, he broke it. Like I've seen where people are like, "Oh, you know, he just hit it." And he takes it with stick, and no, he, he broke it. Uh, so Zibanejad's tonight. There's more cycling, and then they score on the power play. It's Panarin from Zibanejad and Fox. That's at 13:49. Post and in from the slot. Uh, Tampa Bay doesn't end up trying to pull the goalie or anything. They're down by three. They lose by three. Your final score is six to three for the Rangers. They go to 46, 21, and 11. They keep that faint hope alive they can catch New Jersey. On the Tampa Bay side, they're 45, 27, and six. Yep, going to Toronto for game one next week. Uh, shots on net are 12, eight Rangers in the first, 17 to nine Tampa in the second, 16 to six Rangers in the third. Final shots 37 to 31 in favor of the Rangers. Power plays. Tampa Bay 1 for 3, the Rangers 2 for 5, the hits 22 to 21 in favor of the Rangers. Vasilevsky saves 31 out of 37, that's an ouch, after saving 99 out of 100 last week. And then Shesterkin saves 28 out of 31, and there were Igor's better chance 
from the Madison Square Garden faithful towards the end of that game. There you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through and you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.